coming up on this episode of Outlook TV. B-Girls at Buddies in Bad Times Theatre. The Rising Forest in the Human Rights Film Festival. Queer Vendors and Cosplay at Vancouver Fan Expo. And much, much more. Hello and welcome to Outlook TV. I'm Rebecca Wyman. And my name is T. We'd like to thank the Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh Nations for the honour and privilege to film this episode of Outlook TV on their traditional unceded lands. Outlook TV is the queer news magazine show that brings you the stories that matter the most from coast to coast. We're going to kick it off in Toronto with people who have hair as colourful as mine. Yes, it's the Bee Girls in Toronto. Hello everyone, salut tout le monde. The Bee Girls drag trio are known for the big hair and lots of laughs. We caught up recently after the show at the Buddies in Bad Time Theater. So let's hear what the Bee Girls have to say. Tell me how you want me. I feel it in your heart. Please. Hello, everyone. My name is Chita. And I'm Barbecue. And my name is Hardcora. And we are the, the Bee Girls. Like from the land of Priscilla. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're more clown drag. We're a yeah, yeah, cock yeah, and a yeah, frock. Yeah, yes. <laughs> you know, we used to do a lot of straight clubs when we first started out a hundred years ago. And uh, initially we had, um, like, I had a dark black wig. You had a blonde wig. You had a sort of this orange red redhead. redhead. Uh, and we found uh, that uh, because we were performing in places where you wouldn't find drag queens, that people were a little afraid of us you know once they sort of see the act they kind of realize that we're clowns but then we thought like oh maybe if we did colored wigs and i think that really helped us um brand the group, brand yeah. the group and and make us almost like drag clowns yes. almost where people were not as uh trepidatious aquarius you are destined for greatness or madness unfortunately it's option two for you my dear you know, like when you tell a joke about your wacky friend and you give them a strange name. So I said, oh, yes, you know, like that cruise ship that's stranded. Oh, you can pick up a lot of diseases like COVID or anything else on the cruise ship. My friend Nancy Pepperoncini went on a cruise ship and she got very sick, so she'll never go on a cruise ship anymore. Did yeah. she get the brain worm? No, she got chlamydia. <laughs> <laughs> so so she became this like, this uh, is like this fourth, the, character. fourth character. Yeah. And then it's like uh, I always work on elements. So actually, Nancy is me. So, What is it like to play somewhere like Sudbury? Well, I'm from Sudbury originally. Right. Like that's so was his home. So it was my homecoming. Uh, so for me, it was very bizarre because I knew uh, my mother was coming. You know, <laughs> my mother's friends were coming. Uh, I had like high school people that I haven't seen in 30 years coming. Uh, so it was a little stressful, but it was really fun. And I have to say, most of the people. Well, I mean, we are older. So, but we had a lot of 60 plus, and and we weren't sure if they would get the jokes. But they did. So yeah. coming up for us, it's our uh, Homo Night in Canada show. We've done it uh, every year here at Buddies. It's a showcase of gay and lesbian yes. uh, LGBTQ2S plus uh, uh, co comedians. And we host it and we do some, some shtick. So usually we write a couple new medleys and sort of premiere them there. And that'll probably be the basis of our next show. <laughs> Well, what's a bee girl to do? Andre Tardif in Toronto for Outlook TV. This next story is a film that you can see which is streaming across Canada. It's for the Human Rights Festival. It's called The Rising Forest and it's about an Indigenous trans artist. The Human Rights Watch Canada Film Festival is celebrating its 20th anniversary this year. They have a fantastic lineup of films, including Wida, The Rising Forest, about a trans Indigenous artist in the Amazon. Today we're going to meet the screenwriter and producer to find out more. Só da periferia indígena LGBT. Eu gosto de entender os grupos sociais que são perseguidos. The Rising Forest is a film about Wida, who is a indigenous trans um, artist who lives in the Amazon and uh, is doing a work of performance, um, art, and uh, also is a biologist. Um, traveling uh, riverside communities and uh, teaching riverside kids and about the uh, importance of conservancy of the forest, but also 
of ancestral messages. And by doing that, she's also doing uh, artwork uh, where she's showing the whole world uh, the importance of keeping these ancestral messages alive. Para alcançar o que a gente quer, que é essa outra forma de estar no mundo, né? One of the performances where all of them um, kind of like put some makeup on together and they they look for um, leaves and a lot of natural, you know, elements to um, put costume on and they perform together. And I think in that moment, more than explaining anything, you realize that queerness and nature are so interconnected. It's all basically the same teaching. Uh, diversity is necessary for you, human life. So the first thing we, we, we found was the party scene uh, where there's like the red lights. And at that night, we like right after filming, we started talking to Rita and she started to tell us about all this study that she was doing and, and, and um, research she was doing about the rising forest. So the forest that comes right after a soil is devastated and there comes the finer spe species and then of course it arises after that. Eu gosto de recordar todo dia ao amanhecer que o que estamos vivendo não é um processo natural. It's a film that talks about an alternative. It's a film that talks about also celebrating the beauty of being queer, the beauty of being indigenous. So this is also something that it, we, it was really core to us while we're making the film. There are so many voices behind this film. So this is a film made by queer people, by black people, by indigenous people, by Latin American people that want to celebrate the diversity uh, with uh, joy and with a absolute point of view of future. For Outlook TV, this is Angus Pratt in Vancouver. We have to take a little break now. Good timing, my crown's losing its shine. Oh, buff that baby up. Mm -hmm. I'm the Green Arrow, and you're watching Outlook TV. I am Rocket Raccoon, and you are watching Outlook TV. Welcome back, you're watching Outlook TV. David's got a story on the Vancouver Fan Expo with queer vendors and cosplay artists. In a city full of Clark Kent's, we are on the quest to find a LGBTQ plus hero here at the Fan Expo. This is Fan Expo? I, I thought we were in the multiverse. Fan Expo is my first time and I'm looking forward to stealing things. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to meet Yondu. Well, we're actually really excited to be at Vancouver Fan Expo as an entirely queer-owned business. Uh, we are a part of the Dungeons & Dragons scene, tabletop role-playing scene. Um, we are, all of us, uh, identified as LGBTQ in one way or another. Um, and we have dice to match, we have products to match, uh, and we're a very queer, uh, queer representative business. We've definitely got a community, yes, and it's continuing to build. Um, you can find us on Facebook, you can find us on Instagram, we have our own website, obviously, and we come to events like this, uh, supporting the cause and also rolling so many dice. Um, we specifically have rainbow dice um, in the next three weeks. We're bringing in dice that actually represent all of the different pride flags. We're very excited to have those in. What's your favorite part about Fan Expo? Probably just the ability to have you know several different people from all these different mediums come together and um, and, and actually have a fusion of, of what we enjoy best. We're you know we're taking a medium of, of what we find comfortable and making it our own, um, and and we're doing it all as one. It's beautiful. I'm an elder millennial and I'm pansexual and polyamorous. So as being an elder millennial in the gay community, I wanted to start bringing out more representation and I like gay and punny things. So 
hence the uh, designs I created. So I would say that my fans reach everyone, but I get a lot of parents that are looking for stuff for their kids specifically, because there's a lot of young non-binary kids coming out, a lot of trans kids coming out, and even if the parents don't understand it, they're very willing to support. Fan, uh, part of Fan Expo is that I can meet my friends and I can see all the things around anime. Well, my favorite part about this is technically, well, a lot of things I want to buy and I get to enjoy my cosplays. Getting inspired at the Fan Expo, I'm David C. Jones for Outlook TV. We're going to check out the gay games and people who are headed there. Who's going? People who love water sports. Oh, <laughs> I think it's water polo in particular, though, not the other water sports. No, it's water sports. OK, water sports. Well, hello, Look TV. It's me, Ollie, and I'm here at a beautiful aquatic center in Vancouver, where I'm about to witness an amazing practice of the Whiskey Jack, the amazing water polo team that is going straight to the gay games this year. Let's meet them. The Whiskey Jacks is Vancouver's LGBTQ plus water polo club. Uh, we basically invite anybody to come play with us as long as you can swim. Uh, that is one because we are in deep water uh, the entire time, so you need to know how to swim. But we can teach you everything from ball handling to swimming with the ball, shooting the ball into the net. We're taking the Whiskey Jacks water polo team to Guadalajara, Mexico for Gay Games 11. Uh, November 3rd through 11th. Fortunately, the gay games are our competitions at all levels. Uh, so there will be either two or three levels. We're hoping to move into the second level. Hopefully 13 to 15 people that are going down. We have uh, men and women uh, from age 23 uh, to 65. Um, so pretty much full gamut of anyone who wants to, wants to come. are the most enjoyable team I've ever played with in my life. I've actually played for four different clubs uh, between UBC and some other Vancouver seniors clubs and the Whiskey Jacks is honestly the highlight of my week to come to practice every time. Uh, the social aspects of it, everyone in the team is lovely. I would love to hang out with them. Our practices are very friendly. We welcome everybody, those of us with more experience. We're always coaching in the pool as we play with the new players as well. This access to queer sports clubs as an adult is really affirming and like honestly being in this queer space every week is amazing. I work as a person focused on queer inclusion and recreation. <laughs> this makes me cry. Uh, but places like this are so special. This is where we played in the, uh, the English Bay water polo team played in the gay games in 1990 for the first time in one of these major events. Big crowd, all of a sudden we're faced with a regulation sized pool and we're playing against Los Angeles. Former Olympic players on the team and I was basically drowning in the water in front of the crowd. <laughs> but we actually did uh, reasonably well in the tournament. At any gay games, it's just all about the amazing uh, feeling of empowerment, I think, and just uh, the community comes together, we have a lot of fun, and uh, just, it's, it's just like walking into BC Place Stadium, and, it's, and, and in New York when we walked into Yankee Stadium, and just the crowds, uh, it's, it's empowering. We do have a few local tournaments. There'll probably be a tournament here during Kits Fest this year. So come out and cheer us on. It's a, a fun, exciting sport. Well, we are definitely wishing all the best to the Whiskey Jacks at the Gay Games this year. If you want to support them or if you want to join the team, make sure you check them out on social media. For Outlook TV, this is Ali in Vancouver. We're going to have to take a break now.
Oh, something else that needs buffing. I love flannel. Welcome back. You're watching Outlook TV. And now a story about a fun kind of war. Wig wars. All the way in Halifax. Hey kids, it's Auntie Deborah back here in Halifax with Outlook TV. Tonight we're headed to Indulge Bar to experience Wig Wars, a new concept drag show hosted by Vanity Station. Hmm, I wonder if she's in a relation. Let's go get all the tea with Vanity. <laughs> Well, I'm Vanity Station. I was born and raised in Halifax, Nova Scotia, baby. I got some good Maritimer blood, and I am the host here at Indulge Bar of Wig Wars. <laughs> Baby, Wig Wars is a show where the queens come to battle, girl. In a world where there's a lot of shit going on, you know, lots of stuff going on that maybe you can get stressed out, you can get thinking in your head about it. Wig Wars is a night where you can come, forget about that, and just focus on some good nights of drag, baby. <laughs> Well, I was talking with my good friend Shayla Shenanigans, and I was telling her, girl, I remember back when I started drag, I did a lip sync battle with Bridget Von Snaps at her show, and that was fabulous. And she said, girl, I got an idea. You need to do a show called Wig Wars, or the Queen's Lip Sync Battle. And I was like, girl, you got it. But I sat on the idea for three years over COVID, so I am thrilled now that Wig Wars has been such a hit, baby. <laughs> Wig Wars, you know, it's not that serious. You know, it's about having fun. It's about getting together. It's about having a good time with your Judies. So it really pushes the performers to go outside of their comfort zone, have fun, kiki, and just have a good time at the show. And it's really interesting to do a different type of performance as well with a lip sync battle. So you're about to see a show like I don't think you've ever seen before. Baby, any type of drag artist under the sun is invited to perform at Wig Wars. You can be a drag king, you can be a drag queen, you can be a non-binary performer, whatever type of drag you do you can come perform out wig wars and show us your stuff honey we hear it a lot here in halifax that drag stops in montreal how does that make you feel i think that anyone who says that they need to take a trip to halifax and book a ticket to wig wars because their mind will be blown honey and you want to come to wig wars you gotta visit vanitystation.ca baby i got all my upcoming events on there i got all the tea about wig wars and you can come see what maritime drag is really all about well, kids, thanks for hanging out with Auntie Deva. See, I told you Vanity was incredible. She is one of Halifax's fastest rising stars and someone you definitely want to keep your eye on. Because frankly, mommy just doesn't make drag queens. She makes stars. This is Devastation for Outlook TV. Now we're going to check out a new show on Out TV Go, Killjoy. Very funny. It's about queer comedians. Today we're in East Vancouver to speak with the producer of a new six-part series, Killjoy Comedy, which is streaming on OutTV Go. Let's go meet them and see what it's all about. I'm multidimensional. I'm multiverse, you know? There's so many things in this. Killjoy Comedy, it sounds like a contradiction. So uh, we're really kind of playing with that label of Killjoy, kind of reclaiming it, uh, as you might say. I've been called a Killjoy before in life for, you know, being that person that wouldn't laugh at kind of a mean joke uh, or laugh at a joke that maybe on the surface seemed funny, but seemed ultimately to be making fun of a community uh, or a person that has less power in our society. So um, in calling the show Killjoy Comedy, it's kind of a like a dog whistle in the best kind of way to, to bring people around who maybe have also been called Killjoys and who, who also love comedy but don't want that kind of gut punch or sucker punch uh, at a show where suddenly you're laughing and then the next joke uh, makes fun of uh, trans people or racialized people or and so on. We have to shop online which robs us of an in-store experience and also I can't steal. 2020, I made my first documentary called Well Rounded, and uh, it featured Andy Palmiter, who's, uh, you know, a treasure, who uh, is a stand-up comedian, social justice activist, and, uh, and some amazing experts on the topic of body positivity. 
And that's when I realized I want to work with comedians on social justice issues because you can really hear them. And when someone can make you laugh, they can really make you see their point of view. At this time of filming, Mercury is in retrograde. I'm running out of planets to blame until I can get to the source of my problems, uh, which is me. Yeah, each episode features a different hilarious comedian from uh, the West Coast, and uh, they're all extremely different. So um, Tin Lorica, who's uh, one of my favorites, is um, an immigrant to Canada, super dry, super funny, uh, talks about non-monogamy and dating, and a lot about their life with their, their family that they love very much. Well, I'm not going to just leave Vancouver and not tell my roommate. So I was like, hey, mom. I really wanted to make sure, kind of going back to that killjoy theme, that I was able to cast the kind of comedians that I feel like I've been denied all my life as a consumer and lover of stand-up comedy. So I wanted to make sure that our cast showcased uh, people in our community like us, right, who are who identify as queer, racialized, um, people who have historically maybe at comedy clubs felt like they were the butt of the joke, but in this case they're the ones holding the mic and holding the power and setting the stage. So folks who talk about body positivity, yeah. fat phobia, um, who are who maybe speak truth to power might be the way we describe it. So first and foremost, it's a funny show. Uh, and then I think its special power is that it's just a little bit different and you might end up thinking about the comedians a couple days after watching the episode and something kind of sinks in from what they've said. And uh, I'm just really proud of the range of the cast we were able to attract so some of them are quite outlandish beware of train wreck like for overall signs u-haul material explosive finger blasting chemistry and best les bros forever for outlook tv this is angus pratt in east vancouver that's all the time we have for this episode of outlook tv but we'll be back before you know it so in the meantime go and grab yourself a crown <laughs> make yourself feel like a monarch and check us out on all our social media platforms and better yet volunteer with us we're a heck of a lot of fun <laughs> thanks so much for joining us i'm rebecca wyman and my name is t stay, stay safe, safe canada, canada.